Good afternoon. My name is Court Johnson. I'm the VP of Growth at AtScale. Today we have Dave Mariani, our Chief Strategy Officer, providing our demo of how AtScale works with Snowflake. Uh, so before we get into it, I just wanted to let everybody know Snowflake and AtScale recently announced a partnership highlighting how enterprises using the two products are able to significantly accelerate their journeys to becoming a data-driven organization. So AtScale empowers enterprises to seamlessly migrate to and accelerate business adoption of Snowflake's cloud data warehouse. If you'd like to learn more about the partnership, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at the end of the demo or feel free to follow up with us directly. So for those new to AtScale, we're a virtual data warehouse. We work with enterprises to modernize their analytics infrastructure. Our customers span across all major verticals and include the likes of JPMC, TD Bank, Cigna, Aetna, BCBS, and Toyota. Uh, these customers rely on us to help with several data modernization initiatives, including accelerating cloud data transformation without disrupting the day-to-day -day analytics of the business, creating a single virtualized view of their data, no matter where it's stored, optimizing query performance and cost, enabling the security and governance controls around their analytical data to meet the demands of today's modern enterprise. So in this demo, we'll highlight some specific examples of how we're helping our customers achieve these data modernization initiatives with Snowflake as the data platform. Again, if you have questions, please enter them in the question section of the webinar. If we don't have a chance to answer them at the end of the demo, we'll follow up with you individually. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Dave Mariani. Thanks, Court, and thanks everybody for joining us. Um, what I'm gonna do today is uh, take you through um, a, a couple slides that show you what the, the solution looks like and how it works and how it works with Snowflake. And then I'm gonna launch into a, a, a demo. It'll be a fast demo because we don't have much time and I wanna show you as much as, as possible during this time. But I encourage you to, uh, to contact us to get a more in-depth demo um, um, if you're interested in following up. So, um, so, so, so what, what do we do for Snowflake? Um, there's, there's a lot of things we do to, with Snowflake to make Snowflake even better. Um, first of all, we're gonna help you migrate to Snowflake with the least amount of pain possible. I'm sure you have existing BI tools or applications that are hardwired to your legacy um, databases and, and platforms. Well, we can help migrate those to Snowflake seamlessly by allowing tools like uh, like Tableau and Excel um, and uh, um, Cognos and business objects to continue to work as they did before, but work on, on Snowflake. Uh, we're gonna really supercharge your Snowflake instance, and we're gonna make those queries that Snowflake is so good at, at returning even faster and BI fast, meaning queries coming back in milliseconds for regardless of the size of data. Um, we're gonna also going to increase your scale. So uh, what's great about AtScale is by, uh, with our adaptive cache, we can, we can really cut down on the number of full scans, which means that you can get more out of Snowflake uh, for less. That means you can handle at least two or three times more users with AtScale than you could on Snowflake alone on the same instance with the same hardware, with the same configuration. And we're also gonna allow you to get more out of Snowflake. So for your analytics workloads, we're going to, uh, we're going to make them fast um, and we're gonna make them less resource intensive. That means more users, that means faster query times, and that means that you can run uh, with a lower cost um, on your Snowflake infrastructure, um, all while providing uh, your users with an excellent experience. And then finally, um, if you want to do OLAP, which, which I'll, I, will, I'll, I will make the case that you need, um, you, you, we're the only game in town there to, to do MDX and OLAP support on top of Snowflake. And I'll talk, talk a little bit more about that in a second. So uh, we have a, a bunch of great customers in different verticals, uh, much probably like yourself. Um, and as Court mentioned, uh, we do two things for them. Um, we migrate them or help them to migrate and, and uh, modernize to move to a data lake or we allow them to, to uh, move to the, the cloud. In, in Snowflake's case, I'm sure you're looking to move to the cloud and when you move to the cloud, you got to rewire those applications. You got to worry about data in multiple locations. With that scale, we can abstract that for you um, and virtualize that so your users won't know the difference. You can make those platform changes and nothing changes for them. 
So a little bit about just the evolution of the virtual data warehouse and really the story of at scale. It really began at Yahoo um, and at Yahoo. I was the chief data officer there before the, the term was invented. This was back um, in the days when we were inventing Hadoop. And so my infrastructure was a combination of a data lake and data warehouses powered by Oracle. Um, I had multiple consumers, whether they be MicroStrategy talking to Oracle, whether they be um, Tableau talking to SQL Server Analysis Services, um, Excel uh, with 13,000 users, or, um, uh, or my Click users in Europe. In all cases, this, th th this represented a big challenge for me because I had to reformat data for each and every tool um, and, and send data, reformat it, restructure it, and, and not have any way to secure it at all. So what I wanted was the ability to leverage all my data platforms wherever that data lay, whether it's in a data warehouse or in a data lake, and I wanted to be able to treat all my different consumers um, at equally. So if, if you wanna use Click, great. If you wanna use Excel, do that. If you wanna use Tableau, go for it. Um, but when you do, you're gonna, we're gonna make sure that you're getting the same answer, you're applying the same governance rules with the same security, um, with the same great performance, and without ever having to move data or make big data small. So this is how we do it. We do it with, with um, the at scale um, services, our, our, our virtual data warehouse, and where we're connecting your data platforms and the data there with your BI tools or your custom applications. The key difference with at scale is that we do not move data. That means we're not ingesting data from your, your, your Snowflake instance, for example. We're gonna be querying Snowflake directly. And we're gonna make Snowflake even better with our adaptive cache and of course with our OLAP engine. So that's how we actually make Snowflake even better is that we're gonna make it faster, more responsive, uh, we're going to make it work for OLAP and we're going to make it work for all your tools without any recoding or any reformatting. And we're going to make it work for SQL and for OLAP as well as REST um, if you want to actually use at scale um, and build Snowflake and at scale into your custom applications. So uh, why do you need OLAP? If you have any of these things that you need to do, counting customers, comparing store versus region performance, uh, look at uh, looking um, at uh, uh, a period over period, meaning this year versus last year, you need OLAP. Um, and so uh, if you don't have OLAP, you're going to have to build all these calculations and all this business logic directly in your BI tools. Um, and you don't want to do that because when you do that, uh, you, you create inconsistencies and you force your business users to become data engineers which they don't want to do. They just want to use the data, explore it, and do that consistently with speed and with security. And, 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 and when you think about what it means to migrate, you can look at all your different sort of platforms, all sort of bespoke um, with different data pipelines. With that scale and Snowflake, we'll simplify that. So with Snowflake as your central data warehouse uh, in the cloud, at scale can take that and make it work for any of your BI tools or consumers seamlessly without having to have individual data pipelines and all those transformations um, that you need to do separately for each. Do it once and you're done. So that's enough of the slides. Let's get into some interesting um, look at some data here. I'm going to play in this, de in this demo, I'm going to play two sides here. I'm going to first uh, play the data owner side. Um, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take data that is in my, my, um, my Snowflake data warehouse, and I'm going to create an at scale virtual cube from that using what we call design center, which is our cube designer and design environment. From that, I'm going to publish that virtual cube. It's a virtual cube. We're not going to build a cube. We're not going to load a cube. It's all going to be virtual. And I'll show you that. Um, and I'm then going to take off the hat of a data owner and I'm going to become a business analyst. And I'm going to use and explore that data and that virtual view using Tableau and Excel. And if we have time, I'm going to show you how we can integrate data science um, and features generated from a data science tool directly with at scale and Snowflake all within three minutes flat. So let's get going. 
first of all, here is Design Center. I'm gonna give you an orientation and then we're just gonna get busy and build this. And this is what we call a model. So what you see here on the right is that you see we have a preview of your measures and your dimensions. And you can see we have things like customer attributes, we have geographies, we have full hierarchies and full multi-dimensional support. That's very key because of course you wanna roll up city to state to countries. That is OLAP. And if you, have a, if you have other tools where you have a flat view, you can't do that unless you build all that custom logic into your BI tools, which you don't wanna do. So what do you see over here on the left? This is what we call our canvas. These are our data assets. In this case, these are tables in Snowflake. They could be just files in Hadoop, or they could be, uh, they could be tables or files in S3. It's up to you how you wanna model this. We can handle pretty much any kind of data store um, as long as it has a JDBC interface. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna build this pretty nice model. Um, it's, a, it's a web retailer and I'm gonna build this on the fly live for you. So let's go and let's do that now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my project I'm calling Sales Insights and I'm gonna click on the new cube button and I'm gonna call this my um, Snowflake demo. And I'm gonna add that cube. That now adds another cube to, my, uh, to my, my list here. And I can now enter the model. And I, I'm, I'm here now with a blank canvas. So I, you can see I have my preview, no measures and dimensions just yet, because I'm gonna add data from Snowflake to my canvas. And I do that by bringing up our data, our data sources explorer. These are all the connections that I've told at scale about. And it's simply a matter of defining your JDBC connections in at scale. Once you do that, all the data that exists in Snowflake is going to automatically going to appear here. I'm going to take a sales log table and I'm going to drag it onto my canvas. And I don't have to do any kind of imports or any kind of metadata sync. It's all right here. So here is my, uh, what we call a data set. If I double click that data set, that now launches our data set composer. So here's a preview of my data that I'm seeing in this, in this sales log table. And you can see we have some hints here for things that we might wanna do in terms of transformations. You can see this is a mismatch of data. You can see I have some of my, uh, my um, uh, I have my order date key here. You can see is actually a number. Um, you can see I have um, product info which is a set of key value pairs, size, weight, style, and color. Remember that, because we're gonna come back to that. So this is where I can, I can do things like, for example, I got my ship date key. It looks like a number. Let's go and convert it to a date. And I'll specify the format of year, 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 month, month, and day, day. And I'll go ahead and do a preview of that. And you can see what AtScale is doing is actually doing that transformation live for me right here on my canvas in Snowflake. And so this is, this is how I can actually turn that now into a real date um, for my model. What I can also do is I can also add new calculations to my model. So for example, if I want to add a sales tax field, I can go ahead and add um, a formula by typing it into our formula editor and using our helpers and I can do any kind of formula or calculation that Snowflake supports or any, anything that my data, back, my data platform supports. That is anything, that is logical statements, that's transformations, that's user-defined functions, you name it. We're gonna do these transformations. You can see now I have my sales tax here and we're gonna do those right within uh, it, live and do that um, inside of at scale virtually. So you can see there's my sales tax calculated column now as part of my data set. So let's start and let's add some metrics. So what do we wanna do? We're definitely gonna wanna explore our data by order quantity. You can see if I do that, at scale is gonna make some assumptions to create a measure and I'm gonna call it order quantity. In my preview now, you see I have order quantity. Let's go and let's put, let's put in sales amount. That's what my, my, my sales bucket is. That tells me what my basket was. There's my sales tax that I just created as a calculation. Let's go ahead and add that. Um, I wanna count my unique customers, so let's do a little bit of that. 
I'm going to put in my customer key, which is a cookie. Um, and I'm going to call it distinct count. And I'm going to come down here on my, my, my measures dialog. And I'm going to choose to use my distinct count as its aggregation handling. This is where the magic happens. This is OLAP. And this is how AtScale does it, all virtually. Okay, so now I got, um, I got some measures here and I can see that in my preview. Let's now add to our model some dimensions because I'm obviously gonna wanna sort by these. So let's go do that now. I'm gonna go to my library and look at all my reusable objects here. I'm gonna look at all my dimensions. I'm gonna pull on my date dimension, which is just a, and my product dimension. And let's look at some data by customers. Now these are all just data sets that were defined the same way I've defined sales log, except that in this case with a dimension, you can see that we could have multiple hierarchies. So you can see we have a single hierarchy for product. It goes from name to category to line. And you can see we have two hierarchies for, for dates. We have a date month hierarchy, and then we have a date week hierarchy. So how do I make these work for my data that I have in my sales log table? Well, we, all we gotta do is what we call wiring these up. So let's just take our order date key and let's connect it up to our date dimension and let's give it a prefix of order. And if I do that, voila, if I look at my date dimensions, I now have an order date hierarchy with all the, with all the different attributes in with the hierarchy that has been um, completely um, uh, um, um, abstracted here um, from day, month, quarter, a year. So it inherited that, that roll up that I have on my dimension. Let's do the same thing for my ship date. And for the, my ship date, I'll give it a prefix of ship. And now if I look at my date dimension, I'm now gonna have ship date all right there. Let's connect up my product key. I'm gonna do that and let's, let's also hook up my customer key. So for my customer data and I have that. So now what do I got? Well, look at all my customer attributes I just pulled along because in this customer dimension, I've actually have modeled geography city and, and also um, the gender dimension. So it's all been modeled right within that construct. Very easy to work with. This library approach allows you to conform these dimensions. That means you can define them once and allow your users to define different virtual cubes, but you will know that they're all data is all rolled up and calculated the exact same way. Well, what about that? Uh, what about that nested data? Snowflake is great at creating actually um, creating um, um, and, and using JSON data and XML data basically non-scalar data. Well, in our case, in our, in our product info field, remember I had color as key value pairs. So all I need to do is add color and let's add style um, as my attributes. And those create virtual columns in that scale. You can see now there's color and style. So now I can just create degenerate dimensions by dropping my color and style into my dimension pane. So there's no reason that we have to, no, there's no way or no reason we have to actually create uh, dimension tables for color and style. All that's done automatically and seamlessly by at scale. So even though it looks like a star schema and a star model, this is all just done on flat data, all done on data as is, and we're gonna do all that work for you. So now I have a pretty decent model and what we're now gonna do is that we're gonna come to our sales insights project and we're gonna publish it. So publishing it means that my Snowflake cube now um, that you see, my Snowflake demo cube is now ready for the world. And what is that world gonna do? I'm gonna start and I'm gonna start to explore that data with Tableau first. Okay, so I'm taking off my hat as the data owner and now I'm becoming just an, a, a, a um, Tableau user. I'm gonna log in with all my single sign-on credentials and that single sign-on credentials are gonna be used with that scale and, and all the way through down to querying the underlying data platform. So we, we call it true delegation. 
And it's gonna be the same regardless of whether I'm using Tableau or Excel or Cognos or business objects, you name it. So there's all my data that I have now. There's my Snowflake demo virtual cube. Here's my measures that I created that you saw. And then here's my product hierarchy, name, category, and line. So let's get busy and let's start doing some live queries. Order quantity by, let's do it by product. And let's look what we have here. Looks like we have a bike shop. So that is a live query in Tableau against Snowflake. So we didn't create a data extract. We did not move data out of Snowflake and put it into a Tableau data extract. We're doing all this live. What about that color field that was a name, a key value pair? It was a non-scalar field. Well, I go ahead and run that, and I can see there's my colors by products, and you can see that most of my products don't have color as an attribute. So that would be a real waste if I had to turn color into a column in my table, like I would do normally with my ETL tools and with traditional modeling techniques. What about uh, my time dimensions? Remember we created those, those order dates and ship dates? Let's look at my order years. Let's use Tableau to do a filter on 2008 and let's drill down and you can see our performance is very nice and snappy. So that's nice and that's great in Tableau. Let's go see what this looks like with this new Snowflake demo um, uh, cube looks like in Excel. So I'm gonna pull up Excel and now I'm in Excel. I'm gonna go to my data tab and I'm gonna go ahead and connect using the built-in analysis services connector. So there are no client side um, uh, drivers that you need to install to have uh, your users get access to at scale. This means I can get access to my Snowflake virtual demos virtual cube instantly uh, without ever having to have a customer or having your customers and end users install anything on their desktop. This means that anybody with Excel Here's my virtual cube. You can see the same metadata I see in, tab in, in Tableau. Um, I can do my order quantity by color. You can see it's snappy, and you can see I can get the same exact answer that I got in my Tableau, in my Tableau example. So what you see is what you get. Uh, same answer, same security every time. Okay, let's go and see what was happening behind the scenes. So what we, what we saw here, if I come to my query screen, is I can show you what the ma how the magic happens. So here's all our queries we just ran. And the first query we ran um, with that color uh, is, was, was back here in Tableau. So let's see what that looked like. Well, here is our queries and here's our inbound queries. And you can see that this is the query that Tableau threw us. We fooled Tableau into thinking that there was a Snowflake demo table in our, in our Snowflake uh, uh, database. We of course didn't, and we rewrote that query, and that query looks like this. This is the query we actually sent along to Snowflake. You notice there was no aggregation used because this was the first time we ever saw a Snowflake demo as a virtual cube. But then now look what happened when we did our query against um, in, in Excel. This time the inbound query is an MDX query and we fooled Excel into thinking there was a physical cube called Snowflake Demo. And then look at our outbound queries. There's actually two queries because we had one query for the total and one query for the body. And you can see that we rewrote that query there to, to Snowflake and you can see this time, this query came back in under, in, in 550 milliseconds. That's the light, lightning bolt shows that our adaptive cache got busy. And so if you see that the aggregate that was used, we built a one, a one row aggregate automatically uh, for, for, for based on that first query that we ran in Tableau. And now everything is very fast. And that's how we make Snowflake so much faster is because we're making it work not as hard. Okay, so um, what about, uh, let's go do something interesting. My uh, data scientist just created a, a, a list of segments for me. And, um, and let's go and take a look at what those list of segments are. I wanna integrate those segments into my virtual cube I just created. So I have a segment and then I have a customer key. Looks like I have different categories of how, of, of how my customers are being categorized. So how do I then incorporate that in at scale in Snowflake? 
Well, all I need to do is load that data into Snowflake. So I have a Snowflake, I have a, a segments uh, table. I have defined this ahead of time. It has no data in it right now, but it's just a, um, a, a character field and a number field. I'm gonna load it using my, um, uh, and load it from my local system. Here's my customer segments. Um, and I'm gonna use my CSV, uh, 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 CSV um, format file um, for my file format. Um, I'm loading that now into, uh, into Snowflake and I'm done. So now how does that work in at scale? So let's go back to Design Center here and let's go back to our virtual cube that we just created. That's Snowflake's demo. And now what we'll do is we'll come back to our data sources pan, pan, panel and now you see our segments table. So let's bring that segments table, oops, I didn't want to do that, onto the canvas. I'm not going to bring it onto the canvas. Let's, let's go ahead and let's remove that for now. I'm going to create a, actually create it as a uh, dimension. So I'm going to go to my dimension pane and I'm going to create it as a dimension. So I'm going to call it segment. I'm going to pick the key column. My key column is customer key. And I'm going to then pick the, the value column, which is going to be the segment name. So now that I have my segment and I have my segment as a dimension on the canvas. So now all I need to do is link that up with my customer key. So there's my customer key. I'll click, I'll link that up. And now if I see in my preview, there's segment. So let's now go and republish that virtual cube so that my users can now query on segment. We'll go back to Tableau here and you'll notice in Tableau, um, there's no segment here, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit that refresh button and watch what happens. There's my segment field. So now I can go ahead and um, add a new field here. Let's go, let's go add a new query. Let's do order account, uh, quantity by segment. And voila, um, what I got is I now see my frequent shoppers and my newbies. Um, let's look at those by products. Um, and that's how easy it is to add an entirely new um, piece of data to my virtual cube without ETL um, and without having to, to get data engineers involved. So that, that folks is our demo, it was very fast. Please contact, your, uh, contact us and we'll give you a much more in-depth uh, view of this, uh, of this tool. So much more we can do. And for, with that, I'll, I'll give it back to you, Court. Yeah, Dave, I think we have time for one quick question. Just uh, the first one that came through, uh, how are companies using AtScale to help with their cloud migrations? Yeah, cloud migrations are, um, cloud migrations, what, what's tough, tough about that is that you have a bunch of uh, applications and, and BI tools that are hardwired to a data source, especially if you're using legacy BI tools like SQL Server Analysis Services or, or, um, or Cognos or Business Objects. Um, or you have a bunch of Tableau workbooks that are tied specifically to uh, a, a Teradata warehouse, for example, or a Natiza warehouse. With that scale, you can simply point those same workbooks and same BI tools to at scale, and you can migrate your data as is um, to Snowflake, and those applications and those BI tools will all be handled without having to recode or reformat those reports and all those downstream um, all that downstream logic that you built up over the years. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much, Dave. And we do have a couple other questions that we're not going to have time to answer, but we'll follow up individually uh, with you guys just to uh, make sure that, that you can get the answers that you're looking for. Uh, but with that, I want to thank everybody for taking the time today to learn more about AtScale. If you have additional questions, again, as Dave said, please reach out to your account executive or feel free to reach out to us directly through the AtScale website or uh, we have a hi at atscale.com alias that'll, that'll come to our team that we can make sure to get the right person to chat with you. Um, and then you can also join us for our next demo on April 11th, uh, where we'll talk about how AtScale works with AWS and Redshift. So again, thanks to Dave and thanks to you all for, for joining today. Take care.